video we're going to be looking at a structural simulation in ANSYS Discoverer. We're going to be looking at very quick, we're going to be focusing on the explore mode and we're going to be looking at model setup and we're also going to look at go into the refine mode to show how you can um, add local and global mesh settings to your part. So when you import your part into ANSYS Discovery, it automatically presumes that the part is made of structural steel. Um, that can easily be changed. We can double click on our part and we can change the overall material. We can also create our own materials and you can get access to a large data, data library from granted materials as well. In this instance, I may just want to change the material for these two parts so I'm going to select on these two and I'm going to change those to aluminium. So now in my assembly I've got two parts that are structural steel and two parts that are aluminium. I'm then going to continue to add my um, create a simulation so the first thing we're going to do is create some supports and we do this by selecting on some faces we're going to go into our structural simulation and specify supports and here we can specify the type of support so I'm going to say hinged. We can then do the same for these two down here and I'm allowed able to select these two together because they share the same axis. And then I'm going to do the same for finally these four holes down here. So very quickly I've set up my supports. On the left hand side you can see my physics tree start to populate and um, we can see that there's some um, bonded contacts here have been applied automatically so, so it defaults to bonded contacts if I double click on these I can see that we've got three contact pairs one here one here and one here the only one that I want to be bonded is this one here so I'm going to click on that one and say convert to permanently bonded the other two I want to set my own joints so I'm going to exclude from contact detection so now I'm going to apply my own joints so I can use the interactive guide there or I can use my structural tab here and specify joint. I'm going to click on the primary face and then the secondary face using the control and alt key or control and alt to be able to select two. Uh, we can also use this to be able to select a secondary face. So I'm going to do the same on the underside hit the tick box. Finally the last thing I need to do to start getting some results is apply a force so I'm going to apply a force to these two faces. Um, the direction I'm going to apply the force in is the direction of this this edge here this blue edge and I'm going to apply a let's say 8500 newtons and hit the enter tool. At the moment my force is actually going in the minus direction, the wrong direction, so if I click on this tool here I can just delete the minus and that will flip that round. And then hopefully we are ready to go. So my physics is all set up, my simulation is all set up. On the right hand side now I can use the solve button to start to get some results. So because we're in the explore mode these results will be fairly instantaneous. Straight away you can see we've got some displacement results. We can change the units to whichever units you are working in. For instance, I want this to be millimetres. And we can actually use the deformation tool down here to visualise that deformation and actually animate it as well. We can then look at um, potentially stress and we can change this to any units you wish, megapascals. You may know the yield stress or the yield value point of your material, so you might want to set that as your high point. Or we can use the um, slider bar to obviously over exaggerate um, areas of high stress. So in this instance we can probably see that most of the stress is on this bottom component and there's not much on these two on these top components. If this was a suspension part for a, um, a motor vehicle maybe weight saving um, would be important. So in the explore mode we can make very quick design changes and see what effect they have on the model. So I'm going to go into my design tab and use one of our sketch tools, rectangle, um, just to create a very quick sketch on this area. Again, I'm eyeballing this, you can be a bit more precise. Um, but I'm going to create a, a cut through here. 
and instantly the part will re-simulate and we'll get some new results. I may also want to use my move tool to create a copy of this area. So I'm going to use my move tool just to box select this area here and specify a direction to create my copy into and hold control and I can create a copy of this part one step down. So we're making design changes and inst instantly seeing what effect they have on the simulation. Um, so we can see potentially we've got a slightly higher stress points here. We might want to add some rounds into the model um, to see what effect that may have. If we want to validate the simulation, we might take it into the refine mode. So if I click the refine mode here again, you in the refine mode, you would be meshing your part. This is again using the CPU. Um, so we can specify global mesh settings. So these are the settings we can use. If I specify fixed, I can then specify a minimum size, a maximum size, and a growth rate. We can also specify local settings. So I may wish to apply local mesh settings to certain faces if those were of focus. Um, once that's been set up, again, we'd hit the solve button. Um, because it's using the CPU, it's going to take a little bit longer. So I have got one that's pre-set up. This is the one that's been preset up. You can see I've got a global mesh setting for most of the parts. And down here on these bottom faces, I've actually applied a local mesh setting to these faces of one millimeter. And you can see that in the tree here. And um, you can see that represented in the, <coughs> in the mesh part. Again, you can see your results. And because we're obviously using a higher fidelity, um, we can validate these results and if you want to add different monitors to different areas, you can do that as well. So that's a quick video on structural simulation for ANSYS Discovery.